Hello, friends and relatives. This is Jim Gray Wolf Petruzzi here. I'm here with my brother, Chief Charles Two Dog. We're two members of the elder circles that have been recording things for the last couple of months. Charles and I have both been getting a lot of questions and a lot of requests around the 1960s. And for good or bad, we're both old enough to remember because we were part of the 60s. We participated in the 60s. And so to try to honor these, these requests for information, for teaching, we're gonna do this little video. We're gonna share this around. If it helps, if it makes anything clear, please share it wherever you want. If you want more, if you wanna know something additional, send us messages, let us know. We're happy to come on and do this. It's not a problem. I think what's triggered some of this is the unrest that's going on all around us right now. I mean, and at many levels, we've got the coronavirus, we've got crazy weather and climate change. And now over the past couple of weeks, we have this uh, social unrest due to the murder and the ongoing murders of our uh, African-American brothers and sisters. Those um, protests have gone global. We're watching people come into the streets. This is what Charles and I watched and were part of in the 60s. So we wanna share a little bit of what was that about because we know they don't tell you in the history books. They'll tell you there was unrest. They might tell you it was a bunch of long hair hippie freaks who were causing trouble. And of course, just like what they're saying today is mostly untrue about the groups protesting. Most of what they said about us back then is untrue. So we're gonna dig into this and see where it goes. Uh, at some point during the show, we also have Charles who is willing to do, to offer a song that he's written. Now in the 60s and all the protest movements, songs and art and all of that, sort of information was really critical and important to the efforts. I think it's going to appear again here. Actually, we have a good friend and she's trying to bring the arts into this more than it's been brought in. So this is going to be kind of a mixed bag. Uh, we're just going to knock it around for 15, 20 minutes and, and see what we come up with. And again, if you want more, if we didn't hit the mark, if you want something else, please let us know and we will do our best. And if we don't have the answers to what you're saying, we'll tell you that. Maybe we can find them. So thank you for hearing us. Let me bring in Charles before I dribble along any further. Are you there, Charles? Hey, how you doing, guy? I'm right here, yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I was a young, I would say I was a young activist because uh, where I lived at, there was uh, a black grandmother. She was a little heavy set, but she was like five foot tall. And she was uptown and she wanted a drink of water one time, I remember this. And there were police officers there and this one police officer uh, kind of let this shepherd loose, just a little bit. The only thing this woman wanted was a drink of water. And instead of uh, letting that dog get that grandmother, I jumped in front. And, uh, I have a, a quite a bit of a little scar on my, my uh, right lip, wrist from that. But uh, I'd rather the dog bite me than bite that grandmother. Now, in the 60s, we were called everything in the book, dirty hippies. We were called, you know, trying to start something all the time, long hair, hippie freak, uh, because we actually wanted uh, love, peace. That's what, the, that's what the movement was about, love, honor, respect. Then you had the civil rights movement, but, uh, Let's put it this way. I was, in 1963, what really hit this young child's mind, and I'm speaking for myself, was when that special report 
came over the, the air. And back then we had three TV stations, ABC, CBS, NBC. We didn't have no lots of stations like we do now. And they, uh, they stated in uh, Dallas, Texas that the uh, president of the United States, John Kennedy, John F. Kennedy was shot, murdered and killed. That said something in, in me. I was just a child sitting in the, in the floor playing. I've never thought the same. I've never thought like a child since. But that's what started this whole uh, whole thing. So we're going to get in today, and I'm going to give this back to Jim just a minute, but that starts this whole thing of what you see right now is history repeating itself. But it's repeating itself at a higher level because all the peoples of the sacred four colors are marching together. So it reminds me of 1968, believe me, it does. So we're going to get in a little bit. That. So uh, I'm going to hand it back to Jim. And then, Jim, if you have any other questions, just let me know. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. And we intentionally have not planned this out. We just want to let this flow as we think back. And you just heard Charles recount uh, a personal story of his and this woman looking for a glass of water. Uh, many things have changed since the 60s. I'm a little older than Charles. So when Vietnam came along, I was like 18. Um, and I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like the ideas behind it. I didn't think it was a valid reason to go to war. And so I wanted to resist. When they pulled draft numbers, and back then we didn't have a choice. They pulled draft numbers, and that's how you were drafted, based on the number. My number came up number three, which means I was going to go. So it was uh, go to Canada or go to jail or become a conscientious objector if they'd allow it. Well, I, would, I was a conscientious conscientious objector. So I was out in the streets, as was Charles, 18. Um, those who were doing all the hating and bringing about all the war, I hated them back. I threw the stones, I threw the water bottles, and I was angry, filled with hate all the time. Didn't like what they were doing. I didn't like what they were doing to my friends. I quickly lost two friends in Vietnam who <clears throat> were killed right in the beginning. Another one came back without a leg and one arm that didn't work. Um, and yet, as we hated them and they hated us, I didn't see any big change happening. But we fought the war. It didn't end it quickly, but we continued to fight it. Then, as Charles mentioned, we had uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. So I marched with Dr. King. Again, I was probably about the same age. Charles was younger. He was only eight or nine. Turns out we both were in the same march. We didn't know it then. We didn't meet each other then. Um, but we found out about it a year or so ago when we were ta talking and doing our radio show. Well, what Dr. King spoke of was peace and love. Again, as Charles said. The idea Dr. King said was not to hate back, but to break that chain of hatred and fear uh, of our fellow men and women, to break it when they gave hate, to give back love. And that's what we did, and I learned pretty quickly that that's much more effective, as Dr. King's movement brought massive changes, um, not just then, but over time. So as we had those things going on, the other piece of this that was quite interesting and different from now, and I'm sure Charles will talk about this as well, uh, we were a bunch of long hair hippie freaks, basically, who were out there protesting. We were young, just like our young people are now, and I'm so thrilled to see them out there on climate 
change on um, on um, oh, all the all the movements. Water is life movement. Uh, this horrible murder of George Floyd. I'm glad to see our young people out there. But back in the 60s, we did not have that support. Uh, when I marched with Dr. King, I was one of the few white faces in the crowd. Uh, Vietnam War, it was young people and all this, our adults, as Charles said, um, pointed fingered at us, coiled us names, told us to behave like they did, you know, be good, good people and, you know, cut your hair and be like I am, as Charles likes to say. We didn't want to be like they were. But that was the culture. That's what we came out of. And so after a period of time, everything fizzled. And what I'm seeing now, right now, and everything that's going on is nothing new. This isn't a bunch of new material. It's, it's taking off again, where we stopped because we couldn't do it. I'm watching the young people grab it now and all other people with them. As I watch the protests for, for the uh, killing of George Floyd, I'm seeing people of every color. I'm seeing white and black in equal numbers, not to mention red and yellow. I'm seeing young and old. I'm seeing the gay community. I'm seeing the women's community. This is what we've been waiting for. And this is a good thing. What happened in the 60s was us looking for peace and change and no more killing. We couldn't finish that job. Now we can finish the job, I believe. So with that, I will be quiet and turn it back to Chief Charles. One thing I can say, brother, is... Uh... In the 60s, we couldn't finish the job, but we're here. We're here. Our voices are still heard. Now, here's the thing. The reason I love these young people right now is actually doctors, Dr. King had said he had a vision about the mountain, if you remember that speech. And he said he was wanted to see black, little black children, little white children, and actually little children from all four setting together, playing together, not looking at color as a person, okay? And if you look at what's going on right now, every color in the rainbow of people are marching for this. Now, you gotta understand, and this is how a lot of this was, you gotta understand that there were black people working in the garbage, you know, garbage trucks and stuff, that wasn't getting equal pay, was not getting equal rights upon that. So they had signs that said, I'm a man. So we marched with them. The thing about this was when Martin Luther King and us, me and Jim and everybody else that marched in that, it was for justice for everybody, really. Equality. Because uh, we were living in a time where you had uh, an Alabama governor, as far as George Wallace saying segregation, then segregation, now and segregation for forever. Well, he got a bullet for what he was saying. I don't know who did it. You know, and God help him to the, whoever they are. But we grew up in racism also because. Uh, I grew up in KKK territory and I was a hippie and they, I was, God, they thought I was a hippie or, you know, I was the freak show. But actually, I joined the commune. We, we fed each other. We lived e with each other. We loved each other. It was, it was, it was fantastic. But here's what an elder once said, you know. An elder once stated that once the young white people grow their hair long, 
start wearing necklaces, then they'll understand. And then these, com these communes started. All this started. Now, music was a big thing. Uh, if Jim, I'm going to say this. If you remember some of the shows like Woodstock and other before that, in 1968, when you had Robbie Shankar playing the sitar, setting down with that foot tapping as that sitar was playing, that brung, oh my God, I can still remember Mickey Dolan, the, the, uh, the monkeys jumping up and clapping after he was through. I remember Mama Cass Elliot going, Oh man, how this is awesome. It's that we were bringing this all together in the 60s. That was a start. It took 52 years, but look where it's at. So it was basic understanding that what I've been saying for years, you know, is that we're not looking a color of a human being, but we're looking at the human being. Martin Luther King said it was the integrity of the human being. We are not different as a human being, of course. You know, we come home, we love our wives, our husbands, our kids, we eat together, we laugh together, it's all the same. It was the same in the 60s. Now, the problem was in many ways is that you had this world war ii bunch and they were heroes a lot of them were heroes you know they were they won a, a major major war okay but what they were saying was cut your hair don't yell don't let nobody know what you feel like if, you know we wanted to do we this is what this is our bag this is what we wanted to do this is we wanted to be ourselves. But what they were telling you was you can't be yourself. Listen to the president. Back up. Don't, don't cause no waves, man. Well, the only way we get change in this world is when you start throwing the pebble in the pond and get these waves, brother. So that's when uh, bands started coming out you had carlos santana that brought out santana that brought us a little bit of the latino sound to the rock and roll you had jimmy hendrix that came out and went to woodstock and was playing the national anthem on the guitar and making it let you know that vietnam you could hear you could hear the missiles and the bombs going off through the guitar he made that sound to let you know what was happening. We don't, what we were saying in the 60s, you know, as far as the bit, uh, the vets that were coming home, I was marching with you. I was throwing them rocks. I was doing the same, bro. But here's what I found out. Here's what I found out. I had to go back to 1968 and listen to Martin Luther King again. All right. And what I found out through this and listening to him was, wait a minute, the warriors didn't ask to be in Vietnam. We were made go through the draft and other things like that. Like you said, Jim, we either went to Canada or conscientious Fear, you know what I'm saying, or we went to war. So I got to thinking about what Martin Luther King might have said about that. So what we were marching was after that is I don't hate the warrior, I hate the war. Because what we thought in the 60s was the president gets mad, he calls for war, the country goes to war, but he don't go, he sends our poor. 
So he's sitting back eating the steak while we're killing ourselves. That's not groovy, as we used to say. Now, can you dig that? That's another thing we yep. used to say. So oh. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry, I thought you, you were turning it over. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, and I was at Woodstock too. So we lived through those times. They were wonderful times, powerful times, um, sometimes very hard, sometimes very rewarding. But then we had some things happen like Kent State where four students were killed. Um, we had a president killed not long after. We had a lot of things going on and that pretty much put a hold to what we were doing. I see it coming now full circle. I see what's going on now, as I said before, a continuation and it'll work in a better way. But I also see a continuation still of the hate, <clears throat> the fear, uh, the anger, the greed that we saw back then. And it, it's very obvious in the George Floyd situation. Back in 1967, we had the sheriff of Miami when riots were going on, who made the comment, when the rioting starts, the shooting will start. This week, this week, as, as, as protesters are all over the country, we had this person who was sitting in our White House. I can't use the word president when I think of him at this point. We had him say about US citizens, when the rioting starts, the shooting will start. <clears throat> and he wanted to activate 100,000 US military personnel to go to all the cities. We still have that mentality. But I think, no, I know there's so many more of us now. The huge, huge majority of us who are doing this work now are doing so peacefully. Uh, it doesn't mean there are times that something's going to happen. Of course there is. Volatile times cause volatile things to happen, as they did in the 60s. But this is different than the 60s. That's what I want everyone to understand, especially you young people. We are there. We have your back. We will march with you. We will cover what you're doing. The other big thing we did not have, as you heard Charles say, we had three TV stations. We literally had three TV stations, ABC, NBC, and CBS. That is it. There wasn't even cable TV yet. Now, uh, as we've seen, um, something happens. There was a 75-year-old man in, in uh, Buffalo, I believe it was, who was pushed down by the police the other day pushed to the ground on the cement. He was bleeding for no, no reason. He was, he, was, he was with the protesters and the police said it. No, he tripped and fell. Absolute lie. Within two minutes, the video was up. So now we need to take advantage of those things, but not to make us hate or being angry. We need to take advantage in order to replace the systems that need to be replaced. And I'm, I believe in the next year or so, we're going to see that happen. We're in the middle of, and we'll do this in another show, but this is the middle of the prophecy, uh, the rainbow prophecy, I believe. This is when the colors are all coming together to make these changes. And so let's take advantage. Let's remember, you know a little bit more now about the 60s, at least from two white hairs who were there. Um, realize that the 60s did a good thing and started a lot of good things and brought us a lot of changes, but not what we need. Let's go further this time. Together, let's go further this time. And that's all I have, so I'm gonna turn it over to Charles to, well, he was gonna sing a song and maybe finish this off. Well, one thing I wanna say before we do this, bro, before I do this, is I wanna say that a lot of this we lost four influential leaders in this war. 
The first one was Martin Luther, I mean, not, I mean, John F. Kennedy, I'm sorry, that was the first one at 63, okay? The second one was Malcolm X. The third one, now, brother, I'm just going to say this, because uh, he was a reverend. He was a Christian. Yes, he was. But uh, he was a man of peace. Okay. But he was also a man of God. Okay. And this man that I follow so tight ended up shot down on the balcony in a hotel in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. I'm just going to say that. Now, the third one, the last one, I mean, the last individual was the brother of the first one running for president again that was trying to help the black, trying to help the poor, trying to help everybody, or was talking on it anyway, I'm just going to say, and was shot down. Now, before I do this one more time, and I'm not going to say his name, brother, because I can't say it right now. So I wanted to let you know that I watched this the other night. And there were peaceful protesters. They wasn't doing anything. The officers were back. Then they moved up. Then they moved up. And then they moved up. The peaceful protesters weren't doing a thing. Then they tear gas these peaceful protesters because somebody wanted to go and stand in front of a church with a photo op and hold a Bible upside down. So you're going to hurt people for that? Is that what this country's turned into? No, look at, the, look at the young people there, all of that rainbow. It's not going to happen, brother. But see, here's the fact. What was, is, and probably will be tomorrow. But we stand in peace. We walk together with one heart, one mind, one spirit. So a lot of times, a lot of these young people out here, you think the hippie's gone. They just uh, keep coming. So we're going to do it like this, bro. I just wanted to give that out. Now, you talked about Kent State real quick. I, music was still involved in that because you had Neil Young that come out with a song called Four Dead in Ohio. That was from the Kent State. So music's involved, okay? Now, I'm going to give this out. You can take this song however you want to take it. I actually wrote it because I was thinking of the people that have been in these wars, been in this, and war is now, whether you're in the military or not, it's, it's somewhat of a battle. It's a battle, always, okay? So I was thinking about these people. And as these people start getting older and their mothers go on to heaven or the sky world, so to speak, I got to think about it. So I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to see if I can get this right. <sighs> Mama, hold your arms out. 
ไทยได้น้ำทองสมมามาฮูดยอร์มจับยูชัยส์คัมเอนฮาวยูเบบี้ส์คัมเอนฮาว I fought as hard as I can now. No more will I roam. So, Mama, hold your arms up. Your child's coming home. Your baby's coming home. Look out your window, mom. On your porch, I stand. Come out here, oh my mom. I want to feel your loving hand. So hold out your arms, mom. On your porch I stand. Come out here, all oh, my mom. I want to feel your loving hand, your baby. Come home, your child's come home. Oh. Aho, great, excellent, thank you. And the first time I heard that yesterday, um, this could be to someone's earth mother, or this could be to Mother Earth herself. And so it seems like a great time because all of this that's going on is about um, George Floyd, who was murdered, but it's way beyond George Floyd, just like all of these efforts, all these movements are. And so together as we reach out, as Charles was singing, let's reach out and grab hands. Let's walk this together now and walk it to the end and complete it and create in a new good way thank you all for listening we hope this helps again if you want to hear something further if you have questions something else for us to address you let us know and we will be happy to do something about it thank you charles thank you and we were off until the next time naho mini wakana water is life